Jose Mourinho has provided incredible moments throughout his career. The feats he managed with FC Porto, taking the Premier League by storm, the treble with Inter, managing to beat Pep Guardiola's stunning Barcelona side to the La Liga title, and set the scoring record in the process, becoming the first and still the only manager to this day to win a trophy at Manchester United since Sir Alex Ferguson retired, and all along, for those who don't take things too personally and can sit back and enjoy, his managerial rivalries have provided some of his best entertainment. Hey guys, I'm Adrian and welcome to Rabona TV where I know you guys want Roots of the Rivalry to return. I know, don't worry. That was how many of you probably found this channel. But I've done all of the big rivalries in the top five leagues. We've covered rivalries in Asia, Africa, and South America. And while we will move on to others next season, I thought it would be a fun sort of Roots of the Rivalry spin-off to have Mourinho versus everybody. With every job, he had a rival or two that would trade blows with him during press conferences. So let's take a walk through history, revisit all of these, and the best quotes that came from them. I mean, I could make an entire video on Mourinho versus the media, <laughs> but we'll stick to managers for this one. So hey, subscribe if you're new and want more videos like this, as well as contemporary coverage, etc., etc. Join our community. And you know what makes for a great way to get notified about every bit of news surrounding Mourinho, Serie A, or just football in general? Come on, you know who it is. I want to hear you say it. That's right, OneFootball. OneFootball's app is the best app in the game when it comes to delivering news live as it happens straight to your mobile device. And they don't discriminate whether you're an Apple bro or part of the Android army. Android army strong, baby. So this is what you're going to do. Use the link in the description to download the app for free. Get in there and follow all of the teams, players, and competitions you care the most about, and watch your homepage turn into a perfectly curated feed, perfectly curated to your interests. Read articles, follow matches live with their match tickers when you're on the go, track transfers with their rumor credibility raters, and hell, you can even watch some matches live within the app from various leagues around the world. So a big thank you to OneFootball for sponsoring us once again, appreciate you guys. But all right, it's, it's time. Our first stop is in Porto for Mourinho's European tour of savagery. This is a bit of an interesting one as it sort of transpired, at least the juiciest parts, after Mourinho had already left Portugal. But here's the backstory. At one time, Mourinho was the manager of Benfica. I'm sure many of you already knew that, but yes, he had a short stint at Benfica in 2000 and the club tried to bring him back in 2002. But with Gisualdo Ferreira, as his assistant. Now, Mourinho had formerly been a student under Ferreira at the Lisboa Superior Institute for Physical Education in the 1980s. And then in 1991, when Mourinho was a fitness coach for Estrela de Amadora, Mourinho left the club once Ferreira was appointed as the manager. As far as I can tell, there wasn't any public beef between them back then, but when Mourinho was offered the Benfica job in 2002, the club's insistence on installing Ferreira as his assistant was ultimately what drove Mourinho to decline Benfica and join FC Porto instead. God, how things could have been different for Benfica. With Mourinho going to Porto, Ferreira was eventually signed as the manager at Benfica, a disaster, and he later went to Braga, never to beat Mourinho in his six attempts while they were both in Portugal. Later, in a 2005 column that Mourinho wrote weekly for record, Mourinho wrote that, quote, one is a coach with a 30-year career, the other with a three-year one. The one with 30 years has never won anything. The one with three years has won a lot. The one who has coached for 30 years has an enormous career. The one with three years has a small career. The one with a 30-year career will be forgotten when he ends it. The one with the three could end it right now and could never be erased from history. This could be the story of a donkey who worked for 30 years but never became a horse. He called the man a donkey. donkey. And from 10 meetings, Mourinho still hasn't lost against Ferreira, who now coaches Zamalek in Egypt. That's a big job, to be honest. All right, who's next? While Liverpool struggled domestically in the mid-2000s, they certainly had some fun in the Champions League, which is where Mourinho's next rival, Rafael Benitez, would often have the last laugh. For three out of four seasons in a row, Chelsea and Liverpool would be pitted up against each other in the Champions League, and neither manager pulled any punches when it came to their words, as both arrived in England in the same summer of 2004. 
It all started innocently enough, as there were disagreements over whether Luis Garcia's goal crossed the line in the 2005 Champions League semifinal, with Mourinho saying, quote, you can say the linesman scored. It was a goal coming from the moon or from the Anfield Road stands. The best team lost and didn't deserve to lose. After they scored, only one team played. The other one just defended for the whole game. In the next season, Benitez finally responded to Mourinho's jibes when he was asked about the quality of their opponents by saying, quote, to me, Arsenal play much better football. They win matches and are exciting to watch. Barcelona and Milan too, they create excitement. So how can you say Chelsea are the best team in the world? Jump ahead to April 2006 of that same season, and Liverpool have dumped Chelsea out of the FA Cup at the semi-final stage. And when asked whether the best team had won the game, Mourinho responded by saying, quote, Did the best team win? I don't think so. In a one-off game, maybe they will surprise me and they can do it. In the Premiership, the distance between the teams is 45 points over two seasons. But it was after they had left the Premier League where it really got tasty. <laughs> As following Mourinho's departure from Inter, where of course Benitez took over for Mourinho upon him leaving, Benitez remarked at how Inter could potentially win six trophies that season, what with the Super Cups and Intercontinental Championships and all of that. To this, Mourinho replied, quote, One thing is for certain, Benitez won't do better than me. Another thing is also true, that should he lift the Intercontinental Cup, he will have only won two games compared to my 13. Therefore, it will be my trophy and not his. After Benitez won that trophy, Mourinho said that he should have at least received a thank you from Benitez for it. And when Benitez later won the Europa League with Chelsea prior to Mourinho taking over, Mourinho downplayed the Europa League title. Then, after beating Man City, spoke of Benitez's time with Chelsea and said, quote, I watched every game of Chelsea against City in the last year. I saw the game at Wembley, the game at home, the game at City. I saw even parts of the friendlies in the States. Mental, not tactical, nothing. Mental, afraid to assume, afraid to go, afraid to say we want to win, we can win. <laughs> Benitez responded by saying, quote, Marino talks a lot about a lot of people, but I prefer to talk about facts. At Liverpool, with a squad half of the value of Chelsea, we twice knocked his Chelsea side out of the Champions League. Later, with the most expensive squad at Real Madrid, he did nothing in the Champions League. Now he says if there is an offer of hundreds of millions for Hazard and Oscar, maybe he can build a strong squad to win something. This section is long, man, because upon Benitez joining Real Madrid in 2015, Benitez's wife even got in on the action, saying, quote, Real Madrid are the third of José Mourinho's old teams Rafa has coached. We tidy up his messes. If you think about it, of course you end up crossing paths. There are only a few world-class clubs out there. Oh, shouldn't have got involved because finally to this, Mourinho responded by saying, quote, the lady is a bit confused with all respect. I'm not laughing. She is confused because her husband went to Chelsea to replace Roberto Di Matteo, and he went to Real Madrid and replaced Carlo Ancelotti. The only club where her husband replaced me was at Inter Milan, where in six months he destroyed the best team in Europe at the time. And for her also to think about me and to speak about me, I think the lady needs to occupy her time. And if she takes care of her husband's diet, she will have less time to speak about me. Whew. This could arguably be Mourinho's biggest managerial rivalry. Thoughts? Mourinho versus Ranieri is kind of a one-sided rivalry, but the quotes just sting of classic mean-spirited Mourinho, so I had to include them. And shout out to Nima Ruzzari, the man behind Sempre Inter, for guiding me on this one, because this Ranieri slander went a little bit unnoticed in my world. So when asked why he was brought in to replace Ranieri at Chelsea, Mourinho said, quote, In 2004, after coming to Chelsea and asking why Ranieri was replaced, I was told they wanted to win and it was never going to happen with him. It is really not my fault if he was considered a loser at Chelsea. Later in 2008, when he was with Inter and Ranieri with Juventus, he attacked the Tinkerman some more, saying, quote, Ranieri, I guess he's right with what he said. I am very demanding of myself and I have to win to be sure of things. He has the mentality of someone who doesn't need to win. He is almost 70 years old. He has won a super cup and another small trophy and he is too old to change his mentality. He's old and he hasn't won anything. I studied Italian five hours a day for many months to ensure I could communicate with the players, media and fans. Ranieri had been in England for five years and still struggled to say good morning and good afternoon. 
Hey, leave Ranieri alone, man. The poor guy. But to be fair to Mourinho, he did indeed show respect for the manager once he had taken Mourinho's Premier League crown during the 2015-16 season with Leicester. And even more so once Ranieri was sacked in the following season, even going so far as having Ranieri's initials embossed on his Manchester United training top during a press conference. But man, calling him a loser? Whew. Speaking of England and older men, trash segue, Adrian. <laughs> but anyways, Arsene Wenger is one of the managers that has seemingly constantly had an issue with Mourinho. Naturally, Mourinho will target managers that he sees as a competitive threat, though he'll never admit it, of course, that or he'll lash out at those who speak about Mourinho. Wenger has pulled no punches with Mourinho, and Mourinho, well, you know he never pulls a punch, man. The rivalry only got hot once Mourinho returned to England with Chelsea in his second stint, but the foundations were there already late in 2005. After Chelsea had defeated Arsenal 1-0, Wenger commented, quote, Once a sport encourages teams who refuse to take the initiative, the sport is in danger. He didn't like his approach, I guess. And in response to this, a Mourinho classic saying, quote, Wenger has a real problem with us, and I think he is what you call in England a voyeur. He is someone who likes to watch other people. There are some guys who, when they're at home, have this big telescope to look into the homes of other people and see what is happening. Wenger must be one of them. It is a sickness. Wenger's reply was pretty milquetoast, saying he was, you know, consulting with his lawyers about Mourinho's comments. To this, he too was tracking things via 120-page dossier of Arsene's comments on Chelsea. <laughs> binders and binders of comments. And then another classic in 2014, when Mourinho was back, as he referred to Arsenal as little horses when it came to the title race, and Arsene Wenger claimed that this just spoke to Mourinho's fear to fail. You know what's coming next. <laughs> to this, Mourinho said, quote, Am I afraid of failure? He is a specialist in failure. I'm not. So if one supposes he's right and I'm afraid of failure, it's because I don't fail many times. So maybe he's right. I'm not used to failing. But the reality is he's a specialist because eight years without a piece of silverware, that's failure. And as Arsenal were losing at Stamford Bridge in the following season, Wenger entered Mourinho's technical area, leading to the great tie flip. Conte Mourinho's beef was a fun one, and while there were a few moments where they had clashed at press conferences, it started with Chelsea beating Mourinho's Man United 4-0, and with Conte celebrating hard after each goal. Mourinho took exception to that, of course. After the final whistle, he allegedly said, quote, You don't celebrate like that at 4-0. You can do it at 1-0, otherwise it's humiliating for us. Plenty of little jibes went back and forth between the two, but they began to get nastier and nastier in 2017, as neither coach could stop talking about the other. Mourinho made a joke about Conte's hair transplant, saying that he was, you know, not going to lose his hair to speak about Antonio Conte. That's, that's a pretty good one, I guess. After Mourinho had said that he doesn't cry about injuries like other managers do, other managers being Conte, Conte responded by saying, quote, I think he has to think about his team and start looking at himself, not others. I think that, a lot of times, Mourinho likes to concentrate on what is happening at Chelsea. A lot of times, also last season. He has to think about his team. Did Mourinho suddenly become the voyeur? <laughs> Regardless, Mourinho essentially said that Conte acted like a clown on the sideline, to which Conte said that Mourinho had demenza senile, or senile dementia. Mourinho's retort in this ongoing battle, acknowledging Conte's previous time with Siena and his failure to report any match fixing, which he got in some hot water for, but was acquitted of charges in 2016. But Mourinho leaned into it all the same, saying, quote, what never happened to me and will never happen is to be suspended for match fixing. That never happened to me and will never happen. Conte responded with an absolute banger, man. Here we go, quote, I think when there are these types of comments, comments where you try to offend the person and don't know the truth, then you are a little man. <laughs> Sorry. In the past, he was a little man in many circumstances. He's a little man in the present, and for sure he will be a little man in the future. I consider him a little man, and I consider him a man with a very low profile. That was about the end of this feud, as they shook hands after Man United and Chelsea played each other in February of 2018, and that was that for the most part. But man, this certainly rivals his rivalry with Benitez. And finally, this one is interesting because there is respect for each other in many ways, mixed with the 
toxicity that took hold of Real Madrid versus Barcelona while Mourinho was in Spain. It started with Madrid beating Barcelona in the Copa del Rey final, in which Pep Guardiola was upset that Pedro's goal was, in the end, rightfully disallowed. Mourinho responded by saying that Pep Guardiola belongs to a new group of managers that criticize referees when they get decisions right. Not wanting to get dragged into a fight too easily, Guardiola replied to this, quote, In this room, Mourinho is the f***ing chief, the f***ing boss. I don't want to compete with him in here, but this is a game of football. That season, they then faced each other in the Champions League semifinals, where Barcelona beat Real Madrid 2-0, and Pepe and Mourinho both were given red cards. Well, at the time, it was just you know, ascending to the stands for managers. No cards for them yet. But anyway, Mourinho then went on to attack Guardiola's legacy in the Champions League with relation to that controversial tie between Chelsea and Barcelona at Stamford Bridge. You know the one, the iconic, it's a disgrace from Drogba, that game. So Mourinho said, quote, One day I would like Josep Guardiola to win this competition properly. If I tell UEFA what I really think and feel, my career would end now. Instead, I will just ask a question to which I hope one day to get a response. Why? Why Ovrebo? Why Busaka? Why De Blackier? Why Stark? Why? Because every semi-final that same things happen. We are talking about an absolutely fantastic football team. So why do they need that? Why? They have to get to the final, and they'll get there, full stop. Josep Guardiola is a fantastic coach, but I have won two Champions Leagues, and he has won only one Champions League, and that is one that would embarrass me. I would be ashamed to have won it with the scandal of Stamford Bridge. If he wins it this year, it will be with the scandal of the Bernabeu. Deep down, if they are good people, it cannot taste right for them. I hope one day Guardiola has the chance of winning a brilliant, clean championship with no scandal. I'm sure he really wished that for Guardiola. With Guardiola leaving for Bayern, following his sabbatical, of course, he didn't go directly there, and Mourinho returning to Chelsea, the two managers would face each other in the UEFA Super Cup, and with another red card and a shootout winning it for Bayern, Mourinho played into the Guardiola and UEFA conspiracies as he said, quote, Every time I play Pep, I end up with 10 men. It must be some sort of UEFA rule. The best team clearly lost. They just scored one more penalty. Mourinho and Guardiola also got into it at a coaching conference in which Mourinho allegedly said of Guardiola that, quote, when you enjoy what you do, you don't lose your hair. And Guardiola is bald. He doesn't enjoy football. <laughs> but beyond some, he has a thing with hair, doesn't he? he? I think this man really fears going bald. I remember another thing where he was saying that he's calm. And he has lots of hair, unlike some journalists. But beyond some tepid swipes, for the most part, Guardiola wasn't drawn into many back and forths between Mourinho and himself. While the toxic, explosive El Clasico matches reached a boiling point in the season following Guardiola's departure, that being the 2012-13 season. You know, in going through all of this, I really thought that Mourinho versus Benitez was going to be the most heated, but I think you can make a case for Mourinho and Conte as they really went blow for blow. Throw Benitez behind that one, then Wenger, then Guardiola, and the Ranieri and Ferreira ones, as they were a bit one-sided. But regardless, that will do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this walk down memory lane, visiting some of the best beef from Mourinho's history. If you did, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new. Other than that, we'll catch you next Monday. As always, we're here every Monday. All right? Ciao.